Okay, so um, there's been a very large number of research efforts on understanding different things from social media. The area that the group that I'm part of has concentrated on is psycholinguistics and behavior. So understanding intrinsic traits of people from their linguistic and behavioral patterns on social media. Now, the language that they use to yes. communicate. Yes. Um, psychologists have known about this for a long time, that the language that you use is influenced by your intrinsic personality traits. So regardless of what you're talking about, whether you're writing an email or, or t uh, talking about a restaurant that you just went to or even sending a letter to your mother, your personality comes out in a subconscious way in the types of language that you use. And just as an aside, I remember reading recently that uh, oh, the uh, woman who wrote uh, Harry Potter uh, wrote under a pseudonym, and uh, there were psycholinguists who were able to notice patterns and uh, identify her and un unmask her. Absolutely, and 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 this this was sort of academically interesting uh, in the psych psychology community, but it wasn't particularly useful until recently with the advent of social media, where suddenly, you know, in the past you had to ask somebody to write an essay or write a book to mm -hmm. understand to apply these techniques to them. But now we have millions and millions of people apply, uh, providing us with samples of their writing um, and putting it out in public. Um, in many cases, making it public to the world. Can you give us examples of uh, traits that can now be tracked? The followers of Target and the followers of Walmart on Twitter really do use language in measurably different ways. Um, while I say the, the differences are not that large, they are large enough to build a model that can, say, predict who is a follower of Target versus Walmart correctly, say, 60% of the time, where random would be 50%. That's not great, but that's a huge step over not knowing anything about them. So not knowing anything about them and looking at the language and seeing those differences really means that, that these people are different in some way. I mean, of course, there's going to be a lot of overlap, but I think there, there really is is a difference between the two populations and you can detect that from how they use language. Um, I mean, I think the, the examples are in my talk. The, the, the one thing that come, comes to mind, which was a little odd, was that people who follow Walmart swear. They use profanity uh, measurably more often than okay. people who, who uh, follow Target. I'm not sure what that means, but, but it is a measurable difference. Mm -hmm. and, and Walmart would have to probably study to see whether it's an expression of anger at them uh, or whether it's a, a, a subculture or a strata that just tends to yes. swear more. Yes. And, and, and so this is, you know, I think, I think finding, finding these differences is sort of the first step. Understanding what it means and understanding what you can predict from that is, is the next. That's all the time we have today. We've been talking with Eben Hamer of IBM. Eben, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. And thank you for listening to this uh, issue of Informs Today, a podcast by the Institute for Operations Research and the Management Sciences. For more information about analytics, operations, research, and this series of podcasts, visit us on the web at www.informs.org. Good day, and remember, keep on crunching those numbers.